I spent six years spinning slots and betting on sports for eight hours a day. And I'm someone that excelled at school, held a good job, and was always seen as the good guy. How did I, or anyone else for that matter, go from doing so well to struggling with gambling so badly that I had to work two jobs just to get by? There's five reasons that people can get addicted to gambling, or five categories of reasons at least, and I'm gonna go through them today. Even just having a few of these reasons present in your life can make you really likely to develop a gambling addiction. So throughout the course of this video, if you're recognizing yourself, it is an obvious sign that you should reevaluate your relationship to gambling. Category one is psychological factors. Let's start with the illusion of control. People always think, hey, I can win money gambling. And what happens with people with gambling problems is that in the beginning, there's a big win, or at least a couple of wins in the beginning, whether they were big or just frequent. And what this does is it convinces us that this can always happen again. And we might look at that situation and think that something about the way that we were betting, something about our strategy, is the reason that we came ahead with that win the first time we gambled or, you know, earlier on in the gambling. And that can lead us to think something like, I can get better at gambling and I'm already not so bad. So this illusion that you actually have a control over the outcome can lead people to get addicted to gambling because they think, hey, well, I did it once, right? I should be able to do it again. Along with this comes the gambler's fallacy. This is the mistaken belief that after a couple of losses, you're due for a win or a big win. And another thing that follows along with this is the near miss effect. When you almost win, you're convinced that, hey, I'm close to winning. I just need to keep going until I get it. And these things together, along with some of the other forms of gambler's fallacy, lead people to have overconfidence about their actual abilities in gambling, or at least overconfidence about the ability to win money gambling. What's really tough to deal with as someone who wants to win money gambling is that the games are stacked against you. You want to be the exception to the rule, at least I did, you want to figure out a way to come out ahead over top of this evil entity that is the casinos. But what ends up happening is we convince ourselves to keep going back, which leads us to eventually lose more money. It's an illusion of control where we just keep throwing ourselves away. The second reason that people get addicted to gambling is a dependency on instant gratification. These are basically immediate rewards that we favor over longer term rewards. So an example of instant gratification would be spinning a slot machine and seeing what happens within just a couple of seconds, whereas delayed gratification, the opposite of instant gratification, would be going to the gym for a couple of months then you start to see that you're losing weight or you're feeling healthier. So it's a very short time frame compared to a very long time frame. And gambling companies have mastered instant gratification, as have social media companies. When you're swiping on your phone and you keep getting that next video, the next video, the next video, that's the exact same design as any casino game and now any sports book. We're seeing sports betting becoming something that happens so quick. Betting on the first pitch of a baseball game the first touchdown of a football game. The instant gratification of finding out whether your bet won or lost is so strong that it keeps you coming back for more. So this rush, this thrill that you feel from finding out that result quickly, that's what you end up getting addicted to. You're not addicted to losing money. You're not addicted to winning money either. You're addicted to that quick thrill. But instant gratification isn't just about instantly receiving news about money. It could also be instantly escaping the reality that is your life. According to science, there's been two types of gamblers for a very long time. There's the action gambler, the person betting on poker and sports betting, trying to use their skill to influence the outcome of a game. And then there's the escape gambler, someone who gambles to dissociate from reality, feel relief from stress, trauma, depression, frustration, anxiety, because when they're spinning a slot or they're playing a game, that is where their focus is. It takes you out of the real world and puts you into this gambling dream world. That can happen instantly, and escaping your life can be its own form of dependency, and its own form of addiction. However, not all instant gratification is all bad. For example, you smashing the subscribe button right now will give you the instant gratification of seeing the subscribe logo light up, but then it results in you getting access to all the videos that I put out on this channel, 
and hopefully not getting addicted to gambling. That's not too bad. God, I'm corny. Category three is social and cultural influences. And this is a big one right now, especially for young people who are just starting their gambling. Everywhere we look, we see gambling advertising. We see streamers spinning slot machines. We see everyone talking about the bets that they have on the game and every TV network telling you which best bets to have. Right now, we are seeing society normalize gambling. And because of what gambling is, it's leading to a huge wave of addiction. And you very well could be getting swept up in it right now the same way that I did. When we're constantly told that something is normal, it creates what's called the illusory effect. The more often we see something, the more likely we are to believe that it's true. So when we keep seeing commercials of Vanessa Hudgens walking through a luxury mansion and fireworks going off, that's what we think gambling actually is. But in reality, gambling is hundreds of people sitting in front of a slot machine, miserable because they're chasing their losses. Gambling is the guy who's stealing money from his kid's piggy bank to place his next sports bet because he has to win it back so that no one realizes what's going on. There's so much pain that comes from gambling because gambling is a dangerous and addictive product, but it's marketed like it's just a piece of candy. There's no restrictions on what these casinos and streamers are saying, and they're profiting while you are the one who ends up getting hooked to it. I actually made a video called The Toxic Normalization of Gambling where I dove deep into these exact concepts. So check that video out after we finish the last two categories of ways that people get addicted to gambling. Category four is from the financial desperation that comes from gambling. If people will end up doing what I did, you might have started gambling with friends or family as a social event. It's something fun, it's something enjoyable, but then maybe things started to go a little bit too far. You started gambling a little bit more often, a little bit more than you could afford, and quicker than you know it, you've ended up in a situation where if you don't win the bet that you have on right now, you might end up not being able to afford covering your rent or paying your bills. And it happens quickly. What the problem is with a gambling addiction compared to other addictions is that people think that they can solve all the problems that they created with just one more bet. We think if we win, we can cover these debts and no one will know it's a problem and I'll move on and everything will be fine. But then the cycle ends up repeating itself over and over again. And it eventually creates a situation where we end up in the same exact predicament. People might be viewing gambling as their way out of a bad financial situation. That's how the lottery drives most of its revenue because most of its revenue comes from people from lower income communities who might not feel like they have the same job opportunities and that they have to win this massive jackpot in order to get out of poverty or find themselves in a better financial situation. So this dream that we cling to as problem gamblers of the big win in itself can create an addiction. And the problem with that is that you're not supposed to win. The casino always wins. And you're more likely to get struck by lightning twice than you are to win the lottery. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Category number five is of course brain chemistry and dopamine dependency. When you gamble, whether you win or lose, simply the anticipation of finding out what's gonna happen releases dopamine in your brain. That's the neurochemical that makes you feel pleasure. It makes you feel thrill and excitement, and it feels really, really good. But the problem is that as you gamble more, you develop a tolerance to the amount of dopamine that gets released and you have to gamble larger amounts, or at least more often, to feel that rush that you used to feel pretty strongly in the beginning. It's just like tolerant smoking or alcohol or with anything. The more you do of it, the less the effect it has on you, but you have to keep increasing it in your head to keep getting that baseline thrill that you've become accustomed to. The problem with this is that as you increase your bets, you are finding yourself in a more risky financial situation each and every time. And it can get to the point for a problem gambler where this need to get this thrill, this hit of dopamine, can outweigh the need for you to pay your bills, take care of your family, or do anything in your life with your money. So the money is the fuel that helps us get the high. And the high is that dopamine rush that we get from placing the next bet. So you can become dependent on that and it can actually feel in the brain of a problem gambler like if we don't gamble, we might die because dopamine is linked to survival. When our ancestors would hunt for something, if they saw it, they'd feel this intense hit of pleasure, this rush, and that reinforced that we need to keep doing this so that we can get food to survive. Then when they would eat the food, 
there would be dopamine that would go off and it would make them feel good. We need to keep doing this. And it was a great instinct to have. It's what got us to survive. But when that's applied to gambling, it's only working itself in the opposite direction. We feel like we have to keep gambling. We have to keep getting that hit to survive. When in reality, it's the very thing that is killing us. There's also the genetic aspects, which I won't claim to be an expert on. But according to studies, the DRD2 gene in our brain, which is the A1 form of a dopamine receptor gene, in some people's brain is more likely to develop a addiction than it is in other people's brain but that's a little bit outside my comfort zone. What is within my comfort zone is telling you exactly what you need to do to stop gambling if you're finding that you're fitting these five categories. There's four things that you need to do to quit gambling. You need to find alternative things to do with your time. This can be finding new hobbies or just keeping yourself busy because as we leave gambling behind and we stop doing it, our brain begins to reset itself. And as it resets itself, those hits of dopamine that we were talking about earlier, their baseline returns back to what it was before you started gambling. And eventually you reach the point where you can find pleasure from the smaller things in life again, and you're not dependent on spinning a wheel to feel okay. The second thing you need to do is limit your access to money that might tempt you to gamble. In the beginning, I turned over control of my finances to my family, which sucked, admittedly, but it worked because when I felt the temptation to gamble, I couldn't actually act on it because I didn't have access to my debit card. It made a huge impact. I carried a cash allowance and all my bills were on auto pay. The third thing is to self-exclude from the casinos. You can get an app like Gamban as well to block gambling apps and websites on your devices, but just make it as difficult as possible for you to gamble. Because if you do that, then it will help you by putting some time in between your urges to gamble and your ability to actually do it. And in that time, you can actually question do I want to do this? Is this a good thing? Am I going to be okay if I do this? The answer is no. And the fourth thing is to find support group meetings and build a sense of community and accountability. If you are having people in your life that are motivating you to stay away from gambling and you're able to talk to them openly and honestly about how you're feeling, that is going to be incredibly valuable in keeping you on the right path. Additionally, I'll throw a little bonus tip. Manage your urges and triggers. Figure out what is sending you back to gambling if you have relapses along the way and use the information that you acquire to actually make a change. Anyone can make a mistake, but only a fool will continue to make the same mistake over and over again. So if you went back to gambling because you didn't properly self-exclude, do it for the next time. If you went back because you had too much money lying around and you were tempted, then don't keep that lying around. Pay off some debts, invest it, get it away from you. See where I'm going with this? Make it as difficult as possible to gamble and as easy as possible to recover. So if you're interested in how the brain of a gambling addict actually works, then check out this video that I made where I share my gambling addiction story to give you a better insight into what the hell was going on in my head. And until we figure everything out in our lives, let's keep moving forward and let's keep getting better together one day at a time.